What's up everyone? Welcome back for one last build. I am sorry that it took me so long to get these videos out. My kids do keep me very busy. But here we are, sporting a couple of pistols and once again running all toughness for a higher health pool and all resistances score. However, the skill tree on this one is a little more set up for all agility or all ferocity, but we'll get into all of that a little bit later. Alright, so I am, once again, only running whatever gear I've been able to find with this character since I lost everything. Some of it is still low level, I just haven't found anything with better stats yet. Stats like plus to toughness, max health, all and or material resistances, attack speed, physical damage, crit chance, and crit damage. The shoulders, Envoy of War, are just fantastic, if not a bit overpowered, but that's okay, it's only a beta and hopefully things will get worked out. They have a very low amount of health, but they add a very nice damage bonus and 5% health gained per rage point spent, which basically just insta-heals you anytime you use a skill that has a rage cost. Of course, O'Malley's Lucky Belt for the all attributes, dodge chance, crit chance, and magic find. The rest of this stuff is, I don't want to say complete junk, it's just not right for my build. All of the plus to ferocity and to agility should be plus to toughness, but I am working on it. Having to find everything all over again is just a pain and I think my magic find is all used up. <laughs> my characters just aren't that lucky anymore or something, but whatever. This right here would be an example of a perfect piece for this build if that was plus to toughness. The stats aren't perfect, no way, I'm just saying that it has all the right mods. The pistols, oh, I don't know, they, they're two out of the five that I just had left over after everything disappeared that both had critical damage and just so happened that they did the most amount of damage when paired together. Oh, the skills that I am running are Phantom Blades, throw a spinning dual blade in a front line, modified to have increased damage and increased area of effect. Havoc Orb. Target an area and launch an exploding device, dealing fire damage in an area of effect, modified to have increased area of effect, and adds a slow effect to the target area. Mark of Impurity. Curses a target, increasing the damage it receives, modified as enemies killed while under the effect of Mark of Impurity explode and deal damage based on the target's max life in an area around them, and Mark of Impurity spreads to its surroundings on death of the target. Arrows Wail. Let loose a volley of arrows on a circular area, damaging enemies over time as long as they remain inside the circle, modified to add fire damage, and adds a slowing effect to the area. Last and probably certainly least, I always forget it's even on my character, Stings of Creerion. Summon an imposing bow and launch several piercing arrows at once, modified to have increased damage, and reduced amount of projectiles but increased damage. And that brings us to the skill tree. It doesn't really matter which way you go first. I personally like to head into Sentinel first to pick up that 20% increased attack speed. And all that agility that you grab just goes to your attack speed as well and dodge chance. Up into Praetorian for max health, attack damage, and retaliator. Then over to Soldier for some crit chance. Points invested into Ferocity will also go towards your crit chance as well. 20% crit damage. And then up into Ranger for some more attack speed, some movement speed. Projectile pierce every target within a 6 meter radius. Some more crit chance. Plus one target can be pierced. And some projectile damage. There are some very fun variations to this build if you use this node here. I just didn't feel that the minus 25% projectile damage was worth it this time on this particular build. I have done pistol builds with all pierce and multiple projectiles, and I have done builds with all critical chance and critical damage. This time I wanted to try to find a middle ground, and even balance between the two, and honestly I was a bit surprised at how well it worked out. But okay, okay, anyways, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that, that this character's skill tree was set up more for an all agility or all ferocity build. That is because I did not go through any of the toughness nodes on the skill tree this time. I will get all of my toughness from gear that I find. So because of that, if you are the glass cannon type, then forget all of that toughness nonsense, go all agility, kick that damage up from 2400 to 2700, and that attack speed up to 55%. 
prefer more critical chances, then instead of agility, go with all ferocity. Again, up to 2700 damage, this time with a 54% critical chance. It's really up to you. It's, it's all about how you personally like to play. I personally just can't stand that 1400 health up there, and I actually like to survive the teleporting Keiju attack from a Demon of Souls, so I personally will just stick with all toughness for now, but like I said, your build is entirely up to you. Lots of changes still to come for this game, so everything we are doing right now is just kind of temporary. Hang in there. Content Patch 1 is still planned to release on the 30th of May, as far as we know at this current point in time. Alright everyone, that is it. That is our dual pistol dude. He really does not throw out all that much damage, so a very large part of this build is how you play it. And Mark of Impurity. When modified the same way as in this video, cursing one little enemy will sometimes clear the entire pack of monsters upon its death. Damage from its explosion is extremely powerful, so you'll want those enemies grouped up together. And because the single target damage is pretty low considering how much health the elites have, especially when in a group, one tip would be to pull smaller enemies into your boss fights whenever possible. Kite them in a way so that they surround the boss curse one of them, kill the cursed one, and watch the boss's health either completely drop or get one hell of a massive chunk taken out of it. If you don't mind the fight taking just a bit longer, like myself, then it's all about enemy attack patterns. Learn their attacks and then just try to constantly dodge them. Keep an eye on both elites at all times to dodge both of their attacks, but focus your damage on one at a time. It takes a little patience, but stay on one until it is dead, and then take out the other one. And usually the second one is already damaged because of your AoE attacks. Alrighty, take it easy everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay tuned for more gameplay videos and of course more news updates as we get them. And hopefully I will catch you all again next time.